Hi, welcome to n etv I'm Peggy Robinson. Today's guest is Dean Braxton, and he has an amazing experience, and we're so fortunate to have him today. Hi, Dean. Hi, how you doing? Good. So yeah. I'm interested to hear everything you want to tell us about your story and start wherever you like and take as long as you like. Well, you know, the story I have is, I always say it's really Jesus' story. You know, I, I get to tell it, as I tell people, but he's the one that did all the work. And what it was is I died for an hour and 45 minutes. That's according to the medical records and the doctor that was actually in the room. Um, Dr. Rigge at the time was working on me. I Let me just tell you how I died. I had a kidney stone that caused a kidney infection. Um, they gave me antibiotics for that that infection. Um, but I was one of those people that resisted the antibiotics and no one went back to check to make sure that the antibiotics did what it was supposed to do, which was take care of the infection. So when they did the operation, they really um, pushed it or, or released it into my bloodstream and I became what you call septic and everything in my body started shutting down. According to the medical records, 29 different things were impacted by that uh, infection and, and uh, you know, over time, it took about three hours over time, things just started shutting down. And the first thing to go was my lungs. I really suffocated. And then my, I would say my heart. And they they timed it out to be about an hour and 45 minutes. That's what the medical records say. Um, the, Dr. Rigge says it was really, really, it was a really, really long time. <laughs> <So> <laughs> he said I was really, really dead. You know, so I always think about that, you know. Uh, I think the second really was for him uh, because of, because I didn't know you could be really, really dead, you know, that type of thing. Different levels you know? of dead. <laughs> yeah, there must have been, you know. But the reality of it, that's what happened to me. And I'm, I'm a Christian, and I got to go to be with the Father of Jesus in heaven and experience that. You know? And I always tell people I didn't want to come back. It, I, I don't want people to think I came back to, to exploit this experience. There's no way. Matter of fact, my major goal is I'm on that that road to go back to the, be in that place. I just got to finish the job that God has put me on the planet to do. And that's very important for me to do that. But I am on my way home. <laughs> you know, so yep. I'll, I'll do what I have to do here, but I'm on my way home. That's what I tell people. So that's what happened. I, I always like to point out my wife, Marilyn. We're still married after 39 years. I laugh about it because a lot of my colleagues that go through the experience end up getting a divorce because the person that comes back is so changed. They're not the same. And I don't just mean in, in just uh, um, their actions, their mindset. My mindset was changed. And it wasn't that I was a bad person before then and, and I had a terrible marriage. I really had a great marriage. Uh, life was going really well for me, to be honest with you. But when I came back, I was not the same person. And she had to go through those changes and people always ask me, how did she go through? My wife is a prayer. And when I would go do something that she didn't understand, she would just go into prayer. And she prayed. And I really believe that's what helped her to go through that. And we built a whole new relationship afterwards because she had a different man. It was a different person. You know, she could probably tell you the more of this, the, the changes that took place in me than I can. Because as far as I knew, I just came back and I was still me. But she could see the differences uh, the way I thought, the way I said things, um, the, you know, the way I, I, I approached uh, uh, problems, uh, all kinds of things that, you know, before I approached a whole different way than I did after I came back. And so, but she prayed for me during that time frame. She really battled for me. Um, and during that process of the time that I died, my heart stopped for that hour and 45 minutes. She prayed for that. But even after that, they put me on a ventilator. Um, because they didn't expect me to live even after that. You know, things were really bad in this body. Um, and for three days, I li I was on that ventilator. People know what that is because of the COVID thing that just went through the pandemic. And um, on the third day, um, they took me off the ventilator because I started breathing on my own, number one. Number two, about a day before my kidney started operating because they had stopped and they put me on dialysis 24-7. And all those things just came back. And I really believe it's because my wife battled for me. Um, she she went to pray for me along with others. She got other people to pray too. Mm -hmm. But she was she was more of a general and she would tell them, if, if you can't believe my husband's going to uh, live or, or be healed, don't pray for him. 
You know, she would say that to him. She even told some people not even to come to the hospital because they were doubting Thomas's, you know, <laughs> type of thing. <laughs> and she wouldn't even let them in the hospital. And then she would screen everybody that came to see me in the hospital afterwards. And if they had any doubt in their thinking, she would tell them visiting hours is over and wouldn't even let them in the room. So she guarded me during that time frame. And I always tell people, yes, she offended some people. Yes, she made some people mad. But look at the results. All 29 different things that went wrong with this body, God, God healed and brought me back into this body. So, you know, even though she was hard on them and, 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 and directed with them, uh, she got the results she wanted, which at the time was me being back in the body. Now she didn't know I would be as changed as I was. <laughs> <laughs> People need to take me, notes for when their yeah. family has a crisis. This is how you pray. This is how it's done. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. This it, it, you got to Yeah, she she even prayed a prayer that I always thought was really unique. I know. she says I I bind up every negative prayer and every negative word that's being said over my husband. And I thought the uniqueness was the that she bind up the negative prayers because you know how some people they pray they have good intentions. Don't get me wrong, but their prayers are not. Um, uplifting. They're not um, the life-giving prayers. They're kind of doubt prayers, you know, and she bind those up and wouldn't even, I said those wouldn't even impact me. She told the doctors, this is what, she told the doctors and the nurses, don't turn on the TV in the room that I was in. Uh, and I thought that was good because she was making sure that atmosphere was a, a atmosphere of healing, you know, and so, and then when the doctors reported to her about my progress within those three days, the first time they told him I would have brain damage because, you know, you lose oxygen to your brain for five minutes to eight minutes and you have brain damage. And I was without oxygen for an hour and 45 minutes. I have no brain damage at all. And so, uh, the, the you know, when the doctors did come to her and say, hey, he'll probably have brain damage. She she didn't even um, get on him. She's worked in the medical field and she's seen us Christians sometimes. I will belittle the, the medical people. And all they're doing is giving us the truth that they know. They're not trying to uh, make us doubt. They're just telling us what they know, the facts they know. And all she said to the doctors is it doesn't have to be that way. And the reason she said that is because she had a God that could have it done a different way. And God did. I have no brain damage. Nothing's wrong with my brain at all. I laugh I've, about that. Yeah, I've heard uh, <laughs> studies before that actually they studied patients that patients didn't know. Who was prayed yeah. for? Like they knew this in a study, but that's it. Or who wasn't prayed for? And the ones that was prayed for remarkably healed faster, recovered, lived longer, mm -hmm. whatever that was. And then I read about the monks that um, from like a way distance away pray for cancer cells mm -hmm. somewhere far away to be, you know, to heal the cancer, all these cells, and they're healed. Like, so there's yeah. something there. I mean, for people that doubt that aren't Christian, we know as Christians, but yeah. then for people that say, ah, I don't believe, you know, there's there's studies out there for doubting well, promises. You know, the I, you know, one of the things I always tell people, they can say they didn't go to heaven, but they can't say they didn't die. You know, I've been vetted so many places. Um, so many places have asked me to come and they and they vet me, you know, they they want to check it out to make sure it's real and everything like that. You know, we have the medical records and we also put the medical records in the book in heaven. Um, and they're raw. And I mean by that, no one told me what to put in there and not put in there. I just put them in there because at that time, the doctor, Dr. Rigge, the doctor that was actually in the room, he wasn't saying anything about this because all the medical field thought I was going to do is get the information so that I could bring them to court and sue them. And um, I always tell people, you go to heaven and come back and see how many people you sue. You know, right. <laughs> it's exactly. not a part I know that feeling. <laughs> it's not yeah. part of your thinking. I just wanted the medical records to show that how great God is. Um, yeah, because, how could you sue somebody when you just been given a miracle? And these doctors right. help save your life. Yeah, I mean, they, they were there. He so, yeah, he worked hard on me. He could have gave up. He said his norm is about thirty minutes, and that's it. But he went another uh, another thirty minutes, another thirty minutes, and another fifteen minutes. So you think about that. And I and he was asked, "Why did you do that?" He said, "I don't know. I just knew I had to do it." So I really believe because of people praying. God and prompting him, he kept on working on me. Um, the last 15 minutes, I did find out they had stopped working on me. They were cleaning up, and I showed up in the room. <laughs> so <laughs> I came back in. 
So, also, I'll put a rep in you because I know people want to hear your story and I just have so many questions, but I'll try to be quiet. No, 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 that's okay. <laughs> you ask the questions that they'll lead me in the direction that I really, what God wants me to talk about because there's so much I can say, you know? And so there's a, there's my favorites, you know, that I love to, to cover. And then there's some things that God says, no, you need to cover this. So if you have a question, just interrupt and ask because okay. it'll, it'll be good. Somebody out there is praying. They need to hear this. And you're probably being prompted to ask that question for them. So, okay. <laughs> so okay. that's that's the that's just all the medical. God healed me from the top of my head to the bottom of my toes. I was I was considered the miracle man at the hospitals that I was in. I was in two of them. One was in, in uh, Federal Way, Washington State, um, and uh, it's called St. Francis. And then I was moved from St. Francis, that's where I died and everything took place, to another one that was in uh, Tacoma, Washington, which was called Tacoma General Hospital. And I was labeled the miracle man because there was there is no way that I should be I should be here, according to the medical records and everything else. OK, so I honestly believe God brings us back so we can share our testimony and show that it is real. In yeah. these times of trouble that we have right now, where people may not be Christian, may not be reading the Bible, you know, may be lost in their life and, and what's what. And then I, I do, I believe that. I believe we are sent back to go tell it on the mountain, you know. Well, I'll be telling on the mountain in a few days. I'm in California on the Sacramento area, and I'll be in a school, a public school on um, this week, and I'll be able to share this story to public school kids. Um, it's, uh, the Christian club there asked me to come and then they put it around the campus. I've done this a number of times in the United States. And then the kids come and they start asking questions. I show a, a video that I have, uh, that was put together by the 700 club a few years ago it has myself, Dr. Irrigue, and also my wife in it and telling part of the story. It's only about six minutes long. And then I get to answer the questions of the kids. And then um, afterwards, because they're volunteered, this is not you come here because it's an assembly, but it's volunteer. We get to ask how many of those kids want to accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior. And the hands go up all over the um, auditorium. Um, and it's so cool to see that happen. And that's one of the mountaintops that I get to share this story that what God has done in my life um, to so many people. Uh, so that's that's I'm looking forward to, you know, keep on sharing it until I get my go home. But I am on my way home. I'll tell that's people a beautiful <laughs> opportunity to be able to do that. I heard the other day uh, scientists that studies near death experiences said that they're actually sending graduate students, different groups, different places to schools and talking about near death experiences. And then they follow the kids behavior after that. And they're showing that the kids behavior was better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I could see that. Um, that really, really happens. You know, I enjoy it myself to talk about this and the, and the answer the questions. I don't know everything, so I don't try to act like I know everything. I, I tell them what I know, you know what I mean, and, and, and the best way I can say it. Because I always tell people, that's the eternal world. How can you, you know, really describe an eternal world in a temporal world? All my examples are going to fade away here on the planet. But nothing's fading away there. And so when I try to share things with them, I'm a, I'm a biblical person. So I try to give them a scripture too to help them move in that direction. And that's mainly because I really am relying on God to open up even more to them than I, I'm saying in the English language. You know, I'm so curious. I'm curious if you had a moment like I did. Was there a moment right before you slipped on that you knew you were about to go? Oh yeah, that's that's good. To, that's a good. That's a good question. I um, as the poison was going through my body, you know, the infection was going, and things were shutting down. Um, no one really knew at the time what was happening, and so they were, tr were trying to rush me out of the recovery room at the time into ICU and really try to get more antibiotics inside of me. And I can remember with them rushing me down the hallway, you know, pushing that little, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, bed down the hallway. And I remember I was having a hard time breathing. That's what it really was. It was getting shallower and shallower and shallower. And then said, it would push me down that hallway. It hit me. I am dying. <laughs> That's what I said to myself. Now, I'm, I'm saying it in a way like a question because I'm thinking, I don't remember getting shot. I don't remember being ran over by no car. I don't remember falling off no building. 
All I remember is I came in here for a kidney stone, and kidney stones don't yeah. uh, kill you. Yeah, but like I I'm am... dying. Like seriously, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it was like. Seriously, what's going on here? And the way I was dying is I was suffocating, and that was the number one way I did not want to die. You know, and, and I almost drowned as a little kid, so I had that trauma from all those years of almost drowning inside of me. And I even would go to God every once in a while and say, if I'm going to die, don't let it be suffocation. And so here I am suffocating. And like you said, there's that moment that came upon me. I am dying. The next thing that hit me, I did not know it would be like this, was I am going home. Joy, peace, comfort came all over me. And I thought, wow, I didn't know it would be like this. I was not afraid from that moment on, you know. Uh, that was going to happen. Matter of fact, I was looking forward to leaving the planet. <laughs> and everybody, you know, of course, we're like, oh, they're dying or they died. And S into ears, no celebration. <laughs> so, you got it. You got it. It was celebration. Even now, talking to you, as you can tell, there's a joy in it. Yeah. You know, talking about this moment of me leaving the planet, and uh, I, I have joy still to this day. Anytime I share it with people, I know people think, oh, this is bad, or oh, you so you got you got to come back here on the planet. I'm thinking you don't understand. <laughs> My first Indy at five years old was drowning in a pond. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. I didn't go to heaven, it was all out of body, but it was like, oh, this is cool. I get to fly, I get to hover, I don't have to eat my vegetables, I don't have to go into bedtime. <laughs> it was okay. But now my second one at 25, I had little boys at home. And so I mm -hmm. was angry and I was mad and I was upset with God. So yeah. that was different. You know, and that's, I've, I've ran two mamas that, you know, many of them um, over the years that uh, had the experience of leaving their body or dying and going to be with the Father of Jesus and wanting to come back, you know, and even asking to come back. Um, so, you know, that, you know, what you're saying, because they want to raise their children, you know what I mean? To be honest with you, that they, they want to raise their children. I've only had one guy out of the group tell me that. The rest were all women so far. I was I don't told know the about... answer was no. It mm -hmm. was my time. Wow. Wow. So I didn't when know that. I come back, I've just been filled with gratitude ever since that I yeah. got to raise my kids. Well, I was told it was, it was, uh, no, it's not your time to go back. You know, <laughs> that's what most felt... are told. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I think, okay, what were they doing there then? Why did you take them? It's not their time. Like, are we here to see something, come back and tell something? Like, it's got to be a purpose, right? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Well, I get to share this with a lot of people, not through just through the United States, but around the world. And so, um, and and it's even gotten greater, you know, over the time frame. I've been doing this for uh, going on 18 years now. And I have, I, I book out every year somewhere. I booked out mostly in 2024. There's a few days I'm saving. I got uh, nine different places that want me to come. I only got two or three days left. Uh, for And then I'm looking at 2025. And so God has a reason for that. But I am. I, I, I'm not I'm not here to try just I'm on my way home. Did I, you I, 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 I right away publicly because it was like decades, 20 years. I mean, probably like for me. Yeah. Like, but no, did you start telling like talking right away about it? I think maybe with your well, wife's faith, too, maybe that helped. Because you know, a lot of people was, are like uh, crazy, looking crazy and a liar. And yeah. Stupid. When I first when I first came back and I was in the hospital room and they took the tube out of my mouth, I remember saying these words to them. You know, you know, you know, there's a Jesus. You don't have to hope there's a Jesus. You don't have to wish there's a Jesus. So when they took that tube out of my mouth, those were my words. I felt like God said from that moment, you're not to tell people you had a near death experience. You're to tell people you died and you went to heaven. And I've been faithful to doing that. You know, everybody else says near. It was no near death to it. I was, I'm more, you know this, I, I was more alive there than I am here. You know what I'm talking about? The, the life is more than just the body uh, functioning like it functions. Like you said, as a little kid, you know, you, you know, you could, life is more in the sense of expansion. And so I was in that expansion of life. And to be honest with you, I was more alive there than I was here. So I, I, I've been very upfront with people from the beginning that this is where I went and, and what I experienced. Now, I did say something to God um, later on in the hospital room. I, I said to him, I don't want to use this for filthy lucre. And that's money. You know, that's the Old Testament term, our old uh, 
King James version of money. And um, so I wanted to make sure that I was given a gift that I would be able to share with people in a way that didn't want to profit from it. You know, uh, God has blessed me and my wife through it. Don't get me wrong. Um, but if we, if we didn't, we would still share the story. But when I first started sharing, it was really just to get things out. You know how much stuff yes. is in there and you just want to get something out. Find the so I would, I, the, the, even the book in heaven that I wrote, I, it, it really all was emails at first to friends. It, that's all it was. And it was just me getting something out. Since then, um, I, I was in that room and I told the Lord, I said, hey, I don't I, I will not talk about something unless someone asks me a question because I didn't want to move into pride. You know what I mean? That pride area. And once the question's answered, then I can talk about it. But if it's never been answered, I never talk about it due to the fact that I told the Lord that I want to do that. And I don't want to just share to be sharing anything. And so since then. Uh, people have asked a lot of questions. That's one of the reasons I do lots of question and answering, because every once in a while I get a whole new answer that no one's ever asked. And I get to share a whole new area because someone asks, uh, you know, in that area. Mostly kids open up those doors more than adults. <laughs> adults kind of have their boxes. They want me to approve that they believe in. And but youth and um, sometimes teenagers down. But the little kids, oh, boy. They asked the best questions. I was with some this last Sunday at, at my church. Uh, I was pulled out of the main service and asked to go and speak at the children's church. So I went in there and talked to the kids. And they asked some of the best questions ever. You know what I mean? And and it opens up a whole new area for me to be able to, to share. Um, so that's what I really enjoy. But the reality of it is that, you know, I get to share this with a lot of people in a lot of places. I shared my uh, brief version with my grandkids as I was uh, mixing meringue and my granddaughter had her mixing meringue for pie <laughs> for me. And so I was somehow they talked about my YouTube channel about near death experiences and, and here my granddaughter started reading a book about it. And so, so I thought, okay, I think I can talk about it now. Right. You know, yeah, yeah. and so the questions they had too was just like unusual. Like we don't usually. Yeah. Have. They're great. Yeah. I had one time, one kid asked me, does Jesus have a belly button? I thought that was one of the best <laughs> questions ever. I almost started crying because, you know, it's it's really to me, it was a question of his humanity, him becoming a human being on the planet. And, and I and I literally would say to people all the time now, if Jesus didn't have that belly button, what would have happened to me? Because he had to become that human being, die on the cross and raise from the dead. And now I have the opportunity because of what he did to be able to be with the father and Jesus. And so I tell people, you know, you know, yeah, Jesus has a belly button. Yeah. But who would ask that question? No right. adult would ask that question. <laughs> and they were serious. They weren't joking. You understand what I mean? They were yeah. serious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's a deep question because you know, it would be it's almost asking, did he come from Mary? Yes. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes. You know, and that's the way I, what I tell people that that's a deep. That's why I almost started crying, because I knew the significance of that belly button um, that Jesus has, you know, uh, to this day. Both people don't realize, it, you know, it's still there um, because he left the planet, you know, in human form. And he's still there in that in that form, you know, brighter than the sun. I always tell people he's brighter than the sun. He's shining like you can. You know what I'm talking about. But I loved it because I could look at him. Even though that light was so bright, I have these lights shining on me right now, but that light was so bright and I could still look at him. I thought, oh man, this is cool. <laughs> My second NDE, I saw him standing from behind because I asked mm -hmm. God, I said, if you can uh, prove to me, my sons would be better off without me for whatever reason I agree to stay. But if not, I beg to return. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I see Jesus standing there from behind. That's first I seen anything other than bright light other than these outlines, these people. And I knew once in the front had to be God just in the front. And so that was young. Yeah. So I saw him from behind and it's just like something just moved my body just like this with him. And we dropped down to earth and we saw my sons in the future after they had been told that I had died in their reaction. Yes. And it was so painful. I retracted. And then I was sobbing at Jesus's feet. Mm -hmm. And I'm now in a physical body before that I had no physical body. Cause I seen my hands come up from my face. And I said, who else will teach them about you? And I was back in the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm wow. like, and my exact thought I'll never forget was, what the hell was that? I was just <laughs> in heaven accepting it, and now I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> Praise yeah, God. Jesus is real. People don't like to hear it, but they must be done something bad in their life if they don't want to hear that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So but I don't want to keep interrupting you. <laughs> I know people that's okay. uh, we're enjoying this, but I know the audience is like, let him tell you know, his story. <laughs> no, this is good because uh, I, there's other interviews I do with people that have had the experience. And it's good to hear both sides because I was with, um, if, if you've probably heard of a John, John Burke, uh, he wrote Imagine Heaven. Um, and, and so I've become a good friend of his and a few um, months ago, he asked several of us to come and do some videos with him on some stuff. And so there were six of us in the room, counting myself. And it was so great to sit around the table and we're all sharing our stories of how we died and left the planet. And I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I was one of those, I haven't really read anybody's story. And the main reason for that is because I'm believing that if I share something and you share something and we've never ever really um, heard each other's story, and it's the same thing. Now you have two witnesses. Remember that let everything be established in the in the in the eyes of two or three witnesses. I hear that and a lot. I'm not that way personally, but I do hear that a lot. Yeah. So that I stayed away from every not everybody does that. That's just me. But it was really good to be in that room with those guys uh and and, and the two ladies because um when I came came away for away from that, I could say ninety percent of everything I experienced. Uh, in heaven, they had experienced, and we we were in agreement on. We may say it different, you understand right. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the, but it was the same thing, and that was so uh, encouraging to me, um, because here it is. These guys, I I didn't go at the same time they went. They went at a different time, and yeah. they're describing something, and I'm thinking I experienced that too. You know what I mean? And <laughs> I left there to be honest with you, saying. They really did die. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's so said. nice because so few have been there. And to be able to yeah. talk to somebody that's also been there, it's really hard for me not to ask all these questions because I know people just want them to tell their story and get in, you know, like entertained, like hear their story. But like for me, I want to pick at it. And like, did this happen to you? Did you see this? <laughs> so. No, but it's just good to, to know because, uh, you know, those are the things that, like I said, I don't talk about things unless they're coming in questions. And people that have experienced it, they can ask a question that somebody else could not ask due to the fact that they don't know that that's happening there, you know, or that that took place there. And so that's one of the things that's really good about it. I think one of the things that, that happened for me, and I don't know if this happened for you, is when I really entered into that realm, okay, which we call heaven. I always tell people it's really not heaven you want to be with. It's Jesus and the Father you want to be with. And I used to say that all the time. And people always just say, weren't you in heaven? And I say, yes. And I get really sad when they ask me because they were kind of like, oh, you just want to see Jesus and the Father. I'm thinking, wait a minute. You don't get it. Jesus and the Father is heaven. You would have no heaven. That's like going to somebody's <laughs> house and saying, I don't want to see you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to know you. I want to see your house. That's right. It's just, it's just, so when I got there, that was really something. Everything was right. There was nothing wrong. So, you know, you probably use, and may use the word peaceful. And I say it's past peace because there's nothing to be peaceful from. And that's hard to describe because you and me are on the planet and, you know, we got things we want to be peaceful from. I was in my room, uh, in this hotel room and, and the, and the exercise seemed to not work. So, it's kind of hot in here. Um, and I'm thinking, man, I got to I got to get in a cool area to feel more peaceful. <laughs> you know, and did, you go from, did you go from the thought, oh, I'm dying to there and see everything? Or was there a tunnel? Was there a what, gradual what happened visual? To me is I left. I remember leaving my body and going through the through the floors in the hospital. I remember going through the blue sky. I remember going through the universe. I remember hitting that dark area which people say is a dark tunnel. That's when the light was before me. It looked like a window. I'm not saying it was. That's the closest I can come to describing it. And and so I remember that realm. But again, I had no fear. I, I was going to be with the Father in Jesus, you know. And so when I entered into that light, I just remember the, the, how I felt so accepted and welcome and everything was right. And it what was like all see? of that first second when you were in the light, could you see anything other than light? I did. I saw everything when I first came in. I didn't have like a, uh, just a bright light before me. Okay. I mean, when I came in, I literally could 
I could, I could probably, if I was a painter, I could paint the scene of me coming into that to that realm and how beautiful it was. It was to me the closest I can get describe it. Um, it would be like me coming off the ocean into onto land off a beach. It wasn't a beach. It wasn't the ocean. That's the closest I can come to describing how it felt like to me, you know. And before me was a forest. And the forest was made up of so many different trees, beautiful trees. There was grass. There was there was flowers. There were all these things. There were other creations around me, I call them. Uh, you know, some we would call angels. Some we would call animals. Some we, they were all around me. But my, I'll tell you, my focus was on to be where Jesus is. I th I'll be honest with you. It was like they were all there, but I wasn't focused on them. I was focused on I wanted to be with Jesus. And so I went where Jesus was. I remember going going through the forest and going to bed. When I saw him, I went down on my hands and knees. I remember that. I remember going down on my hands and knees, mainly looking at his feet and making these, this, this statement, you did this for me. And the gratefulness, I'm feeling so grateful for what he had done so that I could be there with him. And and all I could do after that, I said those words were, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. What's he you know what I mean? No, he was standing. He was standing and he was addressing a multitude of beings, um, some angels, some redeemed. Then they were in a half circle around him. Like he was standing there and he was he was talking to them all. And there were so many of them. I can't even, I can't, the numbers, you know, you say a thousand, I was short of two thousand, a million. I don't know how many. But they, he was he was addressing them. He was communicating to them, you know. And so when I came upon him, that's what he was doing. And even though he was, he would we say, busy doing that, when I came upon him, I remember how personal he was to me still. It was, but, you know, it was like, even though he was communicating, he probably, I don't know how many of them he was communicating at the same time. But it seemed like he was focusing in on me only at that moment. And I knew he was communicating to every. But he's God. He can do that. See, and I just that intelligence I, just fascinating. Yeah. Yes. It was it was really it, so I remember that moment. Um it's one of my hardest moments when I'm sharing the story um to get past due to the fact that um it's so personal, number one. And so and 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 was a uh, the joy that hit me was just growing every moment. You know, I, I, I was joyful when I saw him, but the next moment was more joyful and the next moment was more joyful and the next moment was more joyful. And the greatest thing about that later on, as I thought about it, that's what I was so made for. So it was I was wired for the joy that the Lord gives me, <laughs> you know, as I like to say it that way. And I just remember just those that moment of being and looking at his feet and I and I make a statement, his feet loved me. You know, uh, and I say it now as, as a statement, but used to say it as, wow, I'm looking at Jesus, didn't see his face at that moment, and his feet loved me, you know, and I could have stayed there at his feet. You know how you're in a warm area and you just want to, you know, I could have stayed there at his feet forever, <laughs> forever, <laughs> and not move because his feet loved me. You know, I did finally look at his eyes and his and his uh, entire being, and he loved me. It's, but at my first moments was at the feet of Jesus. And and I, like I said, I made that statement, you did this for me. And I was so grateful for what he'd done, you know? And, and, and it was just, it was just that moment, you know, that, that really hit me hard when I was there of how much the love of God is for me to the point that I came to understand that we uh, we think it's a blanket love, like if you have a blanket and you throw it over everybody and everybody's got to eat. No, it's individually tailored made. That God loves us so much that he went out and created love for each and every one of us so that each and every one of us would have our own love from him. And I thought, oh, man, that is that is something. And one of the ways I get people to try to understand that is, you know, you have children. And if you have more than one ch child, is you can't love them all the same way. They're different. They have different um, goals. They have different gifts. They have every, so you literally are creating love for them for who they are. Well, God I is think, the same way. Yeah, he I think that's why same. our NDEs are so different. I think they're tailored to us. I I think they're they're tailored to us um, in, in in because they're us. You know, I I tell people when you get to heaven, 
They asked, well, what's the atmosphere like? Well, for you, it would be what you want it to be. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. and I know for us, sometimes that's way past anything, but that's God. He we don't do give that. our grandchildren all the same gift. We give them something no. specifically designed for them. And I think it's like yeah. that. Yeah, it is like that. So that's what that's what I I um, get to share with people about that moment. There's more, you know, there's a lot more that I could even go into detail. I could stay there. There's times when I've been in a church where I've only shared about that moment of of coming to the feet of Jesus for an hour and share what I was was so grateful for, what I experienced there and, um, you know, and, and what I'm thanking him for. Just that moment, you know, there's, there's other moments that I had. There's a few Pardon? of us. That have, there's a few of us that have experienced being at Jesus's feet during our NDE. Yeah. I'm just curious if the Bible says anything about the significance of being at Jesus's feet. It seems like well, there the must Bible, be some message there. Well, the Bible does say this: every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe that's the norm. When you come upon Jesus, you want to bow. I even I don't know about you, but when I'm feeling the presence of God, one of the first things I want to do is bow. You want to fall to your knees, yeah. You want to fall to my knees. And so I was telling people that's our natural position with him. You know, I don't know about you also with with this. I came away from there where he's Lord and Lord and King of Kings. Yes, he loves me. Yes, he cares for me. But he is Lord and Lord and King of Kings. And the respect that I'm to give him is in that type of frame of of thinking. Um, So I accept his love. I know he loves me. Yes, he's friendly to me. Yes, he's kind to me, but he is still Lord and Lord and King of Kings. And the honor that goes with that. I remember when he addressed the, the angels and, and they would literally bow like this and then they would back out. And I and I I thought, oh, wow, what reverence is that? Yeah. You know, I even said, I understand what the fear of the Lord is. They weren't bowing because they feared him. They were bowing because they reverenced him so much. That Even that and, and, they would, and they wouldn't even turn their back on him as they left. They would back. They would back out. You know, mm-hmm. and that's our Lord. And and I just you know really got to see that and and, and see how. And I, I don't. I didn't want to come back <laughs> when he, because I don't want to come back here and and literally work with the Christians on this planet. I'll be honest with you. I was in an area where everybody did exactly what Jesus said. Uh, they didn't question it. You know, they didn't have no committees around what was going on. He said it and they did it. I came to understand by that, that anything that he tells us is a commandment. It's not a suggestion, you know, but I saw it there. I saw the reaction that he got in heaven, you know, and how the respect was given to him. And I that came back with me. You know, he's he's my Lord. He's he's my king. Uh, I, he loves me dearly, and 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 he and he's kind to me. And he's gentle to me, but he is Lord and Lord and King of Kings. You know, even to the point when I didn't want to sing a song that did not say he was Lord and Lord and King of Kings. And I was hard on 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 that for a while. And the Holy Spirit, you know, came to me and said, "Grace and mercy, grace and mercy." <laughs> So refreshing talking to you because so many indie ears come on here. They don't want to say God. They say the source. They want to leave Jesus and God out. And it's just like a breath of fresh air. Like finally, you know, finally yeah. somebody that appreciates and, and was there in the with God and Jesus. And oh, <laughs> it's like I needed this. Like sometimes I feel like they're in the cow of this channel because of the new age stuff and people mm-hmm, just trying mm-hmm. to sell their stuff, you know, all that. And I'm like, oh, I needed this so bad. <laughs> Did you feel like your life on earth when you were first there in heaven was slowly fading? Like when you wake up from a dream, a vivid dream, like, oh, wow, that was real. And you're kind of still attached to the dream. But then it just faded. Did it feel like the importance of your life on earth was did it slowly fade or was just gone? You're good to go here. You know, when I when I went there, you know, I went there to stay. So I didn't I didn't kind of like reflect on the things on earth as much. Um, the things that were good came with me. I can remember things I did. Um, I'm glad you're asking this question. No one's ever asked this question before. So this is a good thing. have been there. <laughs> <laughs> but the reality of it is I really um, saw where things that were important on earth, I could remember. 
the things that were not important and they had to be important in the sense of God, not so much what I thought was important, but with God, I did, I, they were fading away. You're right. They were not, they were not important. And so they were not, they did, they were not existing any longer. That's the best way I could put it, you know? And so, um, uh, those are the things that really, but the things that I like this, this show me and you are doing, I know when we get there, we're going to talk about this show. We're going to be able to uh, even go even deeper to, because the show is going to go out and minister to people. It's going to go out and minister to people in the initial um, release of it. And then there's going to be the continual, um, what do you say, ripples from it. Mm -hmm. And God, and we're going to be able to be in heaven, me and you. And we're going to be able to talk about not just the initial, but all the ripples that took place. You know what I mean? Those are the important things. Those are the things that are eternal. Those are the things. The, the scriptures even say that uh, when the angel uh, came to Cornelius in the um, 10th chapter of Acts, he said, he said your, your prayers and your good deeds are memorial before God. And that means remembrance. So if you take the good deeds, this is a good deed. It's an eternal deed. God remembers it. So we will not see the full impact probably on the planet. But when we get to be with the Father and Jesus in heaven, we will see what this does. Is that good news? Is that good yeah. news? My first you know. second in the bright white light before I saw this, I call the panel of people, is just very hard to see, you know, but it's very faint. But my first second in the bright white light was, oh, my gosh, it's real. The whole heaven, God, Jesus, is real. Even though I hadn't seen anything yeah. yet. Because I wasn't in a coffin, you know, I wasn't worm me. Yeah. Like I was afraid. And and also too, my religion taught me we don't go when we die. We all go all together later. Like all at yeah, once, like yeah. Jesus comes and gets. So, oh my gosh, it's all real. And my next thought was as if I'm praying to God. I'm, you know, like here now, I would say a prayer. I'm like, God, you need to send people back. You need to let people know it's real because the Bible's getting old and people don't really like to read it or they you know, don't want to read it. And, and, and you need to let some people go back and tell it's real. And so later on where I remembered that, I'm like, oh, my gosh, that was my first thought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never I, thinking I, didn't I would go back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't planning on coming back. So <laughs> I was thinking that way. <laughs> Well, I, I saw me. this faint outline and I, my eyes scanned, like, I feel like I have eyes because at that point I'm invisible. I don't see me. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm yeah, still me. Yeah. And, and I'm like, oh, there's one sitting up front or front and center. That has to be God. And it was like, I had a complaint yeah. department. I started griping him out. Wow. <laughs> it's not what you think you're going to go to heaven and do. I was a bad girl. But, you know, I had kids <laughs> raised. Yeah. I could not trust anybody to take care of him. So I was, it was a, a fight for your life deal for wow, me wow. go right ahead I'm just yeah I love your story because like I say it's so refreshing to not you have to hear the source and that kind of thing well, your... yeah and I I just had my 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 encounter there was with Jesus the Father and I call him create uh, uh heavenly beings and that's anything that God has there it, it could be animals it could be um people it could be angels as we call angels you know, it could be the trees, it could be the the um, the grass, it could be anything there. You know, you know, the the enjoyment I had there, you know, outweighs any enjoyment that I that I've experienced before that moment. Now, I've had great joy afterwards um, and because we can have that joy, unspeakable joy, as the Bible says. So I've enjoyed it that. But the reality of it is being there with the father and Jesus, you know, that's why I said I'm on my way home. That's why when I pray, I call it going home. That's my moment of spending time with my father, um, you know, and I just call it going home. I say, I'm going home. <laughs> People say, I'm going to pray. I say, I heard them say like the grass is like alive. The flowers. It, it is. Yeah. The light, the, the, the grass is alive. Nehemiah, the ninth chapter talks about God is the creator of everything. And he only creates life and all of the life uh, worships him. You know, I think it's nine, six. I'm not sure, but it's in Nehemiah the ninth chapter. But the reality of it is that um, that everything was alive. There was nothing dead. Even when I came in, I always say everything in heaven welcomed me. They were glad I was there. You know, I would say it's like Jesus Christ went before me and told all of heaven I was coming. And I, I like to tell people the day he did it is the day I accepted him as Lord and Savior. He told all of heaven. So I believe that everybody that accepted him He's already announced that you're on your way and everything in heaven is looking forward to you showing up. You know, that's the way, not just your family, not just Jesus and the father and the Holy spirit, 
You know, not just the angels, but everything in heaven is looking forward to you being there. So I think I'm, that, you know. I'm having an aha moment, something I didn't understand before just now when you said that. Because after my five-year-old drowning, I, I call my book, The Will of a Wildflower, because of a wildflower incident I had at five years old after my drowning. The flower was alive and communicating with yeah. me. Yes. And then I went to Sunday school and they said, get out a picture and sit down and color. And, and I picked out this picture and I'm like, this is it. This is the one like this was meant to be. It was never like that as a kid before. And I sat down, I started coloring and it was a picture of Jesus sitting on a rock. He had one child on his lap and two others stand by his side. All of a mm -hmm. sudden I start seeing Jesus loves me and I'm a horrible singer and I'm singing over and over and I'm getting so wound up coloring and then all of a sudden, I am in heaven. This yeah. picture is real. Jesus is sitting on a rock with that child, two kids. And I was always embarrassed to tell this. But, yeah. but what I'm understanding, you just made it click right there. Everything in heaven, it comes alive. That picture yeah. come alive. Jesus looked at me and and was, you know, I see, I feel his love for children. And I right, absorbed right. that love. And I see this kid on his lap. And I wanted to push that kid off. So I, a kid wanted to sit on Santa's lap, you know. I didn't want to wait my turn. I could feel his love. I couldn't wait. I wanted to push that kid off and sit on his lap. But I knew I couldn't do it. I had to be a good girl. And I'm just standing there like, I got to be a good girl, you know. <laughs> and I want to sit on his lap. And Jesus looked at me and smiled. Like, you ornery little thing. He didn't say anything. It was just a smile. I was like, you ornery little mm -hmm. thing. It wasn't condemning. It was just like a chuckle. And I heard a voice, not from Jesus. I heard a voice say, um, Jesus loves children of every color. Never forget that. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot that. And every that year so I cool. have this memory and I'm like, I can't tell people this. Like you're coloring and a picture don't come alive. A flower can't talk to you. And I've still told it anyway, knowing people are thinking, mm -hmm. what a fool. But you just said that like, it, it come alive for me here on earth after yeah. my five-year-old drowning. Like it yeah, does. Yeah, there's a lot of things. <laughs> Did you have strange experiences after your NDE? I know you don't call it NDE, but, you know, after yeah. you come back, like heaven was here I on did. earth with you. I did. There's a lot of things that I, I experienced. I don't share a lot of them because then people start worshiping you instead of Jesus. Oh, and right. so there's a lot of things I may share something on a one-on-one -on -one basis with people, you know, those type of things that I experienced. But then most of the time, the things that I experienced here, I can, I'll give you one incident. And um, after I came back in and I was praying with my wife, this was about maybe two, two weeks after I came back home and I was laying on the floor and, and I just, I remember saying to him, um, the Lord, I said, I, it's like I never left, you know what I mean? And, and, and he said to me, you never did. And so that told me how much connection I had to that realm that I never had before. And that, and I still have that connection where I it's more. It's right real. now. I just want to <laughs> hug you so bad. <laughs> there you, go. you know, cause it, it's real, it's real. And, and so, um, you know, it, I don't know about you, but it was hard for me at the beginning to distinguish this world from that, that realm. And I can, but that realm is more real than this realm here. And so that's what I, what he told me. So I've lived with that. I've learned how to, as I call it, walk on the planet with that. Do you ever allow yourself, like I'm in this bliss state right now that I get when I talk about Indies. Do you ever get that way? Where you're just like full of the light. You're in this bliss state when you get retelling your story. Oh, yes. Every time. Every time I, I, one time I was going to team up with this guy named Bill Wise. I don't know if you know him. He didn't have a, a near death experience, but he did uh, have an out of body experience. And he wrote a book called The 23 Minutes in Hell. I don't know if you ever saw that book. And it, went oh, I think big. I vaguely remember it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so me and him were going to do a uh, uh, teaming. I was going to do the heavenly side and he was going to do the hell side. And, um, and, uh, he didn't, we didn't do it. And the main reason we didn't do it is because every time Bill told the story of hell, he had to relive it. You know what I mean? And I thought, oh my God, I would never want to do that. Because every time I tell the story of what I experienced with the Father and Jesus in heaven, I relive it. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm filtering, I'm better at filtering out all the side uh, distractions. Because you know what I mean? It's, it's like going into the forest. There's so much going on, but you're trying to focus in on one area. 
but there's so mm -hmm. much going on. And so I've learned how to do that better. But every time I, I tell the story, even now telling the story, I've got all this stuff on the side that's going on also. And so <laughs> I'm not focusing on it. I'm not talking about it. But if I'm sharing the things like uh, at the feet of Jesus, there was more than just me looking at Jesus's feet. There were things that were going on this side. There were things on this side. There were things in front of me. You know, one of the um, things that I tell people is that when I got there, my family came to greet me in. They were on the other side of Jesus and they came to greet me in. And yes, I'm focusing on my family, but they're not in a uh, just my family. It's a huge group of beings that are there. The you know, ancestors. They're my ancestors. And it was generation after generation after generation. So, you know, when I when I share and I say my grandmother Mary was out front and, you know, of, of them all. And like she was the one that was leading the greeting of me in. I'm not saying she does that for everybody. She was doing it for me. I believe she was doing it for me because I believe she's the one that prayed me into the kingdom of God. And I never really got to thank her. And I, in my heart, it wasn't even a verbal communication I ever said out loud, but in my heart, I always wanted to say thank you to her and give her a big hug for praying me into the kingdom of heaven. And here I am, there she is on the other side of Jesus, and she's out front and everybody else is behind her. And so, and it was generation after generation after generation, some of the ancestors I had been on the planet with. What I mean is, you know, as a little kid, as as growing up, I knew these people, but the people behind them, I had never been on the planet with. Were and they like all in a line, have, like a trail that faded off? Um, not in my case. It was more okay. of a group, a group okay. like you know, a big group of people coming around you, you know, and and they didn't really. Well, you could say they faded off, but it was way back there. It was a bunch of them. Let's put it that way, you know. Um, and that was really outside of my belief system. I didn't know you would meet your family like that in heaven. I, I I thought family, you know, okay, if they're there, they're there. They're not there, that's okay. But I didn't know that that and that we at that moment I didn't know we were created to be with our family forever. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, most people say, "What do you? When Genesis, when Adam and Eve were created, they really were created to be together forever." You know, it's because of the fall, Adam messing up. Now there's a separation. But God has really created us to be with our family forever. And some people say, well, we're all the family of God. You're correct. We are all family of God. But within that family of God, God has families. Yeah, it's, it's just like, like anybody. Yeah, it's like Go a chain ahead. link. Like we know now that we were once in our grandmother's womb because those, those the ovary, you know, holds all that. that That's right. You know, and they had that in their mother's womb. And it's like. It's just like that a so big cool. things were connected. And it like seems like so many people when they're in the East saw their grandmother. Sometimes their yeah, grandmother. Grand yeah, I've seen that. And then the, I always tell people it's family. And you could be even adopted into a family because I've had the people that say, I'm adopted. I said, well, you're going to have your biological family come in. I, that's the best way I could describe it. And your adopted family come in because you're grafted in. And I used the scripture of when Jesus was talking to John. And he said to John, Mary is now your mother. He said to his mother, Mary, John's now your son. And they were grafted in and they became family. So you could have that close relationship with somebody and they graft into your family so that when they go to heaven, literally the family is going to come to greet them in because, and in heaven, no one's going to say you were grafted in. You weren't really, you were adopted in your family, period, you know? And so, uh, you know, that's one of the things that um, really got me is to, is to be able to experience that. And then the second thing that out of that family, if there were family members there that I didn't think would be there, you know, I really thought they went somewhere else. Uh, my Aunt Barbara. And there Maybe she Maybe they did for a while it. too. I mean, we don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I just know this, that when I got there, I knew that the only way you get there is through Jesus Christ. And so she had to accept Jesus somewhere in her life. Because I don't know when doesn't mean that she didn't do it. And I think sometimes we, we have this arrogance about us. If I don't see it, it didn't happen. No, it doesn't matter whether you see it. It only matters if he sees it. And that's what I came to understand. And I and, pray for her. Yeah. You know, I've Several been praying for it. They said they died and went to hell. But when they prayed for Jesus, 
God save me, said a prayer, whatever, like, you know, Howard Storm, that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the hand come down or something coming and brought him up to heaven. I mean, it seems like yeah. it's that. And right? I've heard a guy tell that too. And he connected it to his mama praying. <laughs> a guy, I was in New Zealand speaking, and this Maori guy was telling me about how he was going to hell. And he said a hand came down and grabbed him and pulled him back up. And he said that, that, that he, later on he found out his mom was on her hands and knees and praying at that time. And so I believe God had mercy and just well, grabbed that him. And I found because, that out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because of the mother, you know. So I just share that with you because of Aunt Barbara, I just found out it didn't matter really what my Aunt Barbara, if I knew, as long as Jesus knew. And, and so that was really good um, to be able to experience that. Uh, with her so and 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 people always ask me were there people that you thought would be there that wasn't there in your family and I I didn't know that many of my family members would be there you know um so I couldn't even really tell them there there were people like oh I thought so and so would be there and they weren't there no I couldn't tell you that because I didn't know that many people were going to be there <laughs> but it was so good to to see that many people there and one of the greatest things I have this picture in my my head my dad left the planet in 2017. He, he went to be with Jesus and the Father. And my dad was a smiler. If you saw most of the pictures, he had a big smile on his face all the time. He just was smiling. And when I got to heaven, all my relatives there, all my family was smiling at the same time. And did they I come out of that sister, crowd? Like Jesus was in front of this big crowd of people. Did they come out of that crowd or? Yeah, they, 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 yeah, they, they, at the moment, it was like they were part of that crowd. And remember, I told you, I, I was focusing on one thing. I, when I first got there, I just focused on Jesus. Mm-hmm. So if they were there, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't paying no attention because I was just focusing on Jesus. All right. But um, it was really the third time I went to Jesus. I went to Jesus one time. He said, no, it's not your time. Go back. I started to leave to come back to the earth and my body wasn't ready. So I didn't have to leave heaven and I stayed. And then I went to Jesus a, a second time. A, that's after I traveled through heaven. I went all over heaven. And um, he told me again, no, it's not your time. Go back. I went back to leave again. And my body wasn't ready. So I got to stay. The third time that I came to him, and that's the time that I looked in that crowd and I saw my family. And they were there. It doesn't mean they weren't there the first time. The second time, I just wasn't focusing on them. I was focusing mainly on Jesus. But that third time I got to see them, um, they were there. And so they were in that crowd. That's all I can say. You know, Has anybody the done any good reenactments of your story? You know how they do Not, in some of the videos? The only one, the only thing that they've done the reenactments of is usually just the hospital stuff. Okay. None of the the heaven. actual heaven stuff. I almost want it to be almost like a, a animated show more than a a you know show like this due to the fact that uh, I think we could get more when they animate these the scenes that take mm-hmm. place you know you know there's this movie that's coming out and you may have heard it um, after death yeah. and I got a small small part in it about oh, that a being a part. part oh man yeah, it's, it's so but it's okay you know Lord Lord knows what he's doing and so I'm in that movie um, just a small part of it and 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 sharing just a very little bit. But the reality of it is that God knows, you know, I, I'm waiting. He knows what he's going to do with it. And um, someday I, someone may come and do it and I'll be able to be in, in more um, descriptive of the things that I experienced and how it took place and those type of things. You know, if I win like, the lottery, I'm going to do nothing but make good movies, not the reenactments. Like um, you, hey. of, of in the ears, like take one person as in a movie, just that person. I would do it. Like if I would win the lottery, I would do, I would love doing that to display well, their story and have them watch and say, is this what it looked like? And not stop until you got it, how they were satisfied. Yeah. You know, one of the things I'll, I'll, I'll kind of put a, a plus on that for you. When I was there with the father and Jesus, he said that he wanted to use the media um, to get the gospel out like that. And so uh, Jesus said that to me there. He didn't say it after I came back to the planet. That was one of the, communication she gave to me when I was there. Uh, at the moment, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't thinking I was coming back to the planet, so I didn't know I was bringing that message back here. But to use the media to be able to do that is his desire. 
So if that's if that opens up for you, know that that is God's desire. It's his will. I'm okay? sure it is. It's not just yours, but it's his, which means that he will do what he needs to do to make sure it happens. Matter of fact, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just ask that you bless my sister to be able to have the resources, to be able to do what she wants to do with them, to share these stories in a, in a more descriptive way than just um, someone talking about it, but also being able to be able to show it. And, and Father, I know that if it's done that way, that it will not just be a moment, that it would go even after she leaves the planet and comes back to you. It would be shown over and over and over again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Now I need to go play the lottery. So I never play. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if you need to play the lottery, but I do know I felt in my spirit that, that that's his desire. And with your desire, it's 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 your desire, but I really believe it's his desire inside of you. So something's gonna take place where you're gonna be able to do that. You know, I really, I just, my heart just feels that really strongly right now. And I don't, don't think I do this with everybody. You could look on videos. I don't do this with everybody, but for some reason, uh, I feel like I'm supposed to really uh, support you in this and pray for these things to take place. Yeah. I mean, in the beginning, I just wanted my story to be a movie, mm -hmm. but then I'm like, no, everybody's, I want to be able to show, you know, your story so people can see what you saw, experience what you experienced, see it, every detail, because words fail us. It's so hard yeah. to yeah. describe. And, it, and I feel like it could change the world if people yeah. could actually see God in heaven, how they related to us, how they communicated, because I have notice from my first ND to second one 20 years later even though they were so different i started realizing this mode of communication was the same i don't know about you but for me uh, um to transfer a thought sometimes yeah. just this scene like a movie screen would just appear oh mm -hmm. okay it could be a memory it could be something that never happened just like illustration to show me but then when jesus took me in the future and i saw my boys and my youngest um, biological, he's a middle son, so we have a younger adopted three boys. Jeremy says to his older brother, Matthew, he says, I don't care that you say mom is dead. I want her back. And I want her back right now. Oh, and I felt his pain so bad that I retracted. Yeah. I was back in heaven. And I was so confused for so long thinking, how did I see a day in the future that never happened? Remember, I told God, if you can show me my kids would be better off without me, whatever reason, I agree to stay. Not yeah. to return. He act, I didn't think, I thought he would tell me. I didn't think he would actually take me and show me no. how my boys yeah. would be feeling. But the, he has the power to do that. And people think yeah. God is so ancient and old. Yeah, he is. But he's also now, and he's so futuristic. Yeah. Yeah. Out of our technology <laughs> can even begin to compare yeah. the intelligence. That, That's right. You're right. Isn't it yeah. a strange thing to live on this earth and know what it's like? Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, it is. It's, it's. Uh, you know, for me, you know, as I said, if I didn't have the statement, it was the first two and a half years were really, 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 really hard. The first year and a half, I would not let myself say I didn't want to be here because I knew if I said it, I would be so depressed, you know. Um, finally, you know, my son, about two and a half years later, came to me. He said, Dad, I really want you to be the man that you used to be because he said, all it seems like you're trying to do is hurry up and get out of here. He was right. I was trying to get my checklist done so I could leave the planet, to be honest with you, go back to be with the Father of Jesus. And I, I was saying that, and, and as he was saying to me, he was crying. He said, can't you just pray about it? Can't you just ask God to to help you can't you just pray about it and i just really didn't want to because i didn't want to be the old man because i was free in so many ways the things just things didn't bother me like they used to and i was so free and i because he was crying as hard as he was i decided yes i'll go ahead and do it so i i told him i'd do it he left the room and i just remember laying in the bed looking up at the ceiling and saying i said father and then i said jesus how do, how do i live here how do i walk on this planet Cause that's how I looked at it. You know, I was, I was walking on like walking on the surface and, and, and I heard him say to me, do it like I did. 
<laughs> and I said, and I said to myself, we're all supposed to be doing it like you did. That's what I said, you know, and that's how, and then I thought I'm on my way home. And as I'm on my way home, uh, I will go and do what God wants me to do. Even like this um, interview with you right now and talking to you, you know, it's no accident. You and I both know it's no accident. When Jesus said to me, no, it's not your time. Go back. You know what I mean? And when you came back, God knew everybody we were going to come in contact with, you know? And so he knew why, when, the timing, all that type of stuff. And so I always look at that people. This is part of what I'm supposed to do as I'm on my way home. But I'm on my way home. My journey is like I'm walking on my way home. And this is somewhere where God said, you need to stop, take time out, share the story. But I'm on my way home. <laughs> I, I can tell you as the five-year-old child that drowned was all out of body. Mm -hmm. um, I would try talking to kids. I wanted kids to play with. Yeah, and yeah. They couldn't hear me. I would run around a yard yeah. playing with kids. They couldn't see me. And it's not like I feel down about it now, but at the time, it's just like, huh, gosh, they're ignoring me like my siblings do. And so I was going in and out of houses and you know, I was just floating around. And I think, you know, people get in a hurry to go back when they hear these stories of heaven or us that's been there. And yeah. I think we have to remember that we only have this short time on earth to yeah. love our family, to enjoy earth, the earth that God made for us to enjoy and eternities forever. And um, I'm sure it'll be great. Um, but um, I think we all have a job to do here. It's like, we can't go yeah. home until we're done with the work day. We got work to do and we got to provide, you know, this information. Yeah. yeah. I always say, this is the pathway. My father says, I need to go as I go home. I will do what I need to do. I will accomplish what I need to accomplish here. A few years ago, I was diagnosed with cancer. And I'll be honest with you, when I was diagnosed, I thought, oh, oh I get to go home early. <laughs> Seriously, that's what the first month. And then I remember saying something to the Lord in, in the hospital room. And I told him, I said, I would stay here until I'm 95 to get this message out, you know, if that's your will. He never ever came back to me and say, Dean, I, I want you to be here until you're 95. You know what I mean? Because the planet you know, isn't the best place to be as far as I concerned. But I remember saying that to him. And from that moment on, then I, I made sure I got a number of people to thank God that I was healed. And then when I went back to get checked out again, about a month later, they said, you have no cancer. And so I was healed at that moment. But I know that I have a responsibility to do on this planet. Uh, and when my responsibility is over, then I will go home. I don't want to go home one day earlier. You know what I mean? Then I'm supposed to be there. Um, but, but the reality of it, you're right. I wrote a book called I, I Need You There, Sang the King. Uh, it's a little coloring book, a coloring book and a storybook for kids sharing the story of me leaving the planet and going to be with the Father and Jesus. And um, the whole book is really about um, not so much I need you in heaven, sang the king. I need you back here on the planet because I felt like when Jesus said to me, no, it's not your time. Go back. He was saying to me, I need you there more than I need you here. And that's what I felt like he was saying to me at that moment. And so I wrote that book to say to every kid, finish your responsibilities here on the planet first, and then you go home. <laughs> so, yeah, so. I have started to look at life now. Like, I think we are, um, when we're born, there's this great big, like, billion piece puzzle. It's all put together. Like, God's already you know, sealed it all together. Mm -hmm. But when we're born, it's like God just picks it up and opens the box and scatters it to the wind, like go live your life. And as mm -hmm. we get older, we can start to see all those pieces put together and how things interwoven and that didn't work out because it was supposed to be this way. It just seems like you can see the the tapestry. You can see the grand design. Yeah. yeah. It's well, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited to do the things I'm doing on the planet, enjoy it. You know, I enjoy sharing every time, you know, um, you know, I do a lot of traveling, lots of traveling, you know, um, um, I'm, I spend a lot of time in hotel rooms going places. But the reality of it is that, you know, this is the this is the responsibility I have on the planet. And I take it very seriously. You know, you must I, be a I, good oh, speaker and you must be a good writer. And we don't plan this when we before our NDEs. Most no. of us have no like connection to any of that. 
Um, I'm not either. I'm not a good writer and I'm not a good speaker. I just have the love for it. So I'm glad that so many are because that's what is drawing people in and getting the interest yeah. and attention. And we need that. <laughs> and, and, you know, and I had a friend of mine just go home, be at the Lord about uh, three weeks ago. Um, and his name was Dick Cohen. He's a, he, he was, he was 97 years old when he left. He didn't come to know Jesus until he was 92. And he did it by reading the book in heaven that I wrote. He read that book and there's three places in it. I opened up the door for people to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And he uh, called his adopted daughter to come over so that he could read that passage that invites Jesus into his life. And when that moment came into it, when that moment he did that, boy, he was just joyful. When you were around him, he was so grateful. He was so joyful. And um, his wife had left the planet uh, 18 years earlier and she had become born again, but he resisted it all the way up until he was 90, 93 or 92 years of age, rather. And it was interesting from that moment on, he just enjoyed life. So I got to see him about a week before he left the planet. I went and, and to where he was, he was at home and I went to him and I, and I, and he, he was laying in the bed. And then when I, when he knew I was there, he woke up, he was cognitive, his mind was thinking right. And he had so much joy and, and, and he knew he was on his way to leave the planet to go, you know, to be with his father and Jesus. And boy, I just looked at him. I said, I got to remember, you know what I mean? I just got to remember that these, this moment, even though it's sad for us on the planet, that, you know, I miss him. But for him, it was so good. Now he gets to go and he's going to be seeing his wife when he gets there. You know what I mean? He has no children. He never had any children. Him and his wife never had any children. And so it was just so good. And then his adopted uh, daughter, you know, uh, took good care of him. Um, and we'll be doing his... Uh, a memorial service in a, in about a week or so and so it'd be great to it'll be great at that moment but he just really um solidified in me the importance of me being on the planet and sharing the story because it gave him the opportunity to come to the realization of jesus christ and make that decision that's such an honor to be there in those moments and to be able to provide yeah when my mother-in-law passed away 2019 i walked in the house and her daughter said uh, mom said that grandma was just here and said, Janice, that was my mother. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> she says she was just here. She says, Janice, don't get in a hurry. Cause Janice was a nurse. And when the doctor told her to go home and die, like go in hospice, yeah. like I think she took it as a doctor's order. Cause she was going away too quite quick. Like within the week, you know, she was like, yeah, so I, I knew that I knew that meant she was going to go soon. But her mom's come and say, don't get her. I knew it. So I grabbed a notebook and a pen. I sat by Janice's side and I said, you know, I've always said I'd like to, if she had read my book, had wanted to write your book, like a you know, smaller version. I said, that's what we go ahead and do that right now. And she's okay. And so I said, okay, start when you, you know, youngish, earnest your memory and go on, memory and go on. And she looked up the ceiling the whole time. It, I could see she was seeing everything. And she's yeah. like, I can feel my dad holding me carrying me I can and her dad died way before you know and oh I can just feel up in his neck and oh I just love my dad I had a horse named King and she described what King looked like wow. throughout, throughout childhood and I wrote it all down ended up it was her eulogy I yeah. ended up wow. after she passed I uh stood up at the funeral it was a huge big funeral because this woman I mean she you know bus driver 4-H and everything mm -hmm. and um so when I read it, all of a sudden I started feeling like her. And afterwards, people said it was like she was standing there. It was her language, how she talked. Wow. You know, I basically dictated, you know, what she said. Yeah. And her husband just mouth was hanging open, looking at me like, what happened here? And it was <laughs> it was uh, beautiful because after I was done writing with her, um, I realized well, as I was doing it with her, I realized I was walking her home. Yeah, she was seeing her dad and she was remembering her mother and all these things. And I, oh, my goodness, I'm not just writing her story. here; I'm writing her home. I'm writing her eulogy. Yeah. yeah. And it was yeah. just a couple of days. She was gone. But yeah, it's an honor to be in those because it can be a celebration. I mean, I ended up making this a celebration because right. like Janice, right, right. She, she lost the son of uh, leukemia at five years old. Of course, always yeah, been a yeah. source. But like, you're going to see Jeffrey. 
And she says, yeah. I always heard you talk about these things and I didn't know if I believed them. She says, but your story's never changed. And I could tell yeah. she was becoming a believer. Yeah. And she yeah. had hope yeah. that she was going to see her parents and see her child. And it wasn't like everybody sitting around crying. Everybody was happy for her. Yes. And the yeah. moment, the day of her funeral, I stepped outside of, from her house. I stepped out of our camper. And all of a sudden, this has never happened there before because the siblings that was in the house all got up. I'm like, what's going on? This big, huge flock of birds out of nowhere right. just came and just took over the sky. It was loud. And they was all together in one in trees on one side of the farm. And then they flipped over all together on the other side. And then they just started. Start, and I'm like a fool standing out there. <laughs> you know and everybody thought then i lost my mind but i was like i don't care yeah. i could feel heaven all around yeah. us yes well, i'm praise sorry i get it. wound up <laughs> that's okay that's okay that's good <laughs> so yeah those those can bring bring can bring such tragedy into such joy when you believe yeah. and know yes sir. that's right you're right you're right about that so what was it like right before you came back from heaven? Did you just leave all these family members? You got to go back and you were, I think you said come back three times. Well, well, uh, I, I didn't come back to the three times. I was told to go back and I didn't, well, I would always, the first time I get to what I call the edge of heaven, I knew if I took one more step, I'd be out. It wasn't like it was dark. It was always light, but I knew if I took one more step, then I would be in that darkness heading back to this planet. And I knew my body wasn't ready. I just, since it wasn't ready so i go back into heaven or go back i was already in it just go around and explore things and then uh the third time when he said it to me i was in the crowd of of, of um beings you know some redeemed some uh angels and we were all facing jesus i was just part of the crowd now you know I mean? <laughs> and he looked at me and he said no it's not your time go back and you everything out of here of <laughs> yes. and everything in front of me moved out of the way like he's not talking to me you know <laughs> like he's now nah, he's, he's looking over the, the, and i remember the words coming from him this is the only time uh when he really spoke to me uh, with his words everything else was like you said thought to thought you know that type thought of thing. thing but this time he spoke and, and and it was like everything parted like a red sea parting out of the way it came to me i remember those words coming inside of me I was thinking that uh, later on when I was in my hospital room, I should have been disintegrated or blown apart. But they went in. I felt this discomfort going in. And when it came in, I remember thinking to myself, um, you know, he told me, no, it's not your time. Go back. I felt like he was saying, I need you there more than I need you here. He didn't say those words. That's what I felt. I felt like a soldier. I used to be in the military. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? I didn't turn around and leave. I backed out. I remember leaving that realm, and when I left that realm, once I left that realm, I remember crying like a baby all the way back to this realm. You know what I mean? Because I didn't want to come to this realm, back to it. I remember coming into the hospital room and hovering over my my body. I came and I looked, and they were there. They were doing things um, to clean up, and I remember kind of hovering over my body for a moment and then turning over and going and settling in my body this way. I always think, I don't know why this didn't go in my body like this. I think I thought if I did, my eyes would be at the back of my head. So I had to <laughs> line up right correctly. And I settled in. And then that's when the heart monitor started going beep, 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 and everything. And then they intubated me. They put the tube down my throat and all those type of things. But I remember those, that moment of uh, coming back to the planet. It wasn't, it wasn't that my best trip. Best trip was going. Coming back was sad for me. You know what I mean? Um, and I just remember that coming back to the planet and being, you know, being back here. But uh, that's how that's how it ended. You know, with him saying, no, it's not your time. Go back. You know, I'm describing it like it was a long ordeal. It wasn't. It was very short. You know, I didn't look back and, and look at anybody. I do remember my grandmother, Mary, saying to me just before that, bring as many of us back with you as you can which meant to reach as many of my family members as possible on the planet to, to about Jesus. Um, but then that's, that's the, you know, the main thing that took place uh, in coming back to this planet and being here. I just remember how sad I was coming back here. I was sad, you know? And so 
But, you know, being back on the planet and being a few years now, you know, I've seen what God has done with um, me being here and, and the people that we've reached all over the world. And, you know, we've got more to do and we're going to do it. You know, but I always say I'm on my way home. You know, that keeps the, the, the joy going. You know, I, just had a, and, I get visuals sometimes. I, I get a visual of when you go back, like there's thousands of people behind you. And, and uh, you say, it was your grandma that said that? Why well, didn't mean that many? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I've got to share with my, with my family. My dad, he went home, like I said, in 2017 to be with Jesus. Yeah, but he wasn't a Christian when this happened to me. And he came to know Jesus during the, 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 the two years of me learning how to golf because he is a golfer and I hated golfing, but I needed, I, I knew I needed to reach him. So I took up golfing and, and would golf with him quite often. <laughs> so, and it worked, you know, uh, and I didn't share with him like, you know, the, I would just be out there with him and he would talk to me. And then one day he told me he was a believer and 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 that was really something and i asked him did he accept jesus he said yes and so that was really good you know what i mean in that sense so i know i'll be able to see him there's other family members that have gone and lots and lots and lots of friends have left the planet since then you know during that time frame and and they're there and so um but i'm looking forward to meeting them all as i as i say leave the planet it, it's like me like a air like i'm on the airplane and I get on the airplane, I go to a destination, and then um, someone else is going to get on the plane later on and go to the same destination and meet me there. And that's how I look at it. I don't look at it as people think a lot of times as deaf. I look at they left the planet. Yeah, do I miss them? Yes. Do I wish they were still here in, in, in some incidents? Yes. But I know where they are, and I go, I'm going to go to be where they are. As David said, when his son left, you know, I'm going to go be with him. He's not coming here. I'm going to go be with him. So what is it? The scripture, every knee shall bend, every head shall bow, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Every it says every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so I try to tell people it's better you do it here because there it's too late. You gotta make the decision here. So I'm trying to reach as many people as I can on the planet and go places. I was in Sweden and Finland um, a few months ago. Wow. And I was so welcome, man. I was, uh, people were so grateful that we came. I didn't know it. I felt like God told us to go. And we set it up and we went. Um, but I didn't know we were going to be welcome with, as we were. And so many people would come up and get prayer and um, pray for people. A lot of times I don't do the praying. I take a team with me. Um, in both instances, I had a team of 10 and then I had a team of eight different people. And they do the praying. I have them be out the altar i may pray a little bit but i don't want people to worship me and you know how it is you know people think oh you're the one that died you're the one that went to heaven you're the one that did this i'll get yeah. more power from you and yeah. i always say no it's not me that you want touching you it's jesus that you want touching you right. so i try to defuse that as much as possible when i'm somewhere because i want them to have that experience with jesus not dean i don't get a man jesus does how many years did you say you've been doing this uh, 18, going on 18. Wow. And how yeah. long ago was your near-death experience? Um, it was 18 years ago. Oh, okay. you uh, have been. You I, just started right away. I started That's awesome. probably, um, I got to say, uh, I died May 5th, 2006. I probably started going out sharing in September of 2006. So from September of 2006, yeah, and at first I thought it was just going to be a temporal thing. I was not planning on doing it as long as I've been doing it. I thought I was going to do it for maybe at the most five years. I was told by someone, your story would get old, people would get tired of it. And and I so I planned maybe five years at the most. But I, I had an encounter with God later on where he came to me and he said, stop treating it as a side job. Stop treating it as a hobby. This is what I called you to do. And I remember bowing my head when I heard that and said, okay. And from then on, it exploded. You know, from that, that, that next that next year, it was in, it was in December uh, that he told me this in, in Mesa, Arizona. <laughs> I'll never forget that. <laughs> you know, he told me this. And I bowed my head and I just accepted it. And that next year, I did two over 200 some odd uh, uh, meetings. 
and and another 200. Now I average between 120 to 130, maybe 40 meetings a year, uh, you know. So, and I usually we're booked out, like I said, about a, you know, a year ahead of time. Um, you know, it's hard because sometimes the older churches want me about 60% of the time is older churches, churches I've been to, our services I've been to, they want me to come back. I built a lot of friends. And so they want me to come back, you know, and then I try to save about 40 to for new places. Um, it's hard, though, because I, I got more requests than I can handle. And so I just kind of like um, I just kind of like see what the Lord says. And, and I'm trying to do it every other year with some places, but it's hard, you know, I feel like and, some of us. You know, that are Christians like we're the new pastors. No, we didn't yeah. go and learn to do this, or we're not, you know, quoting the Bible usually, or yeah, but we're we're telling our story and it's affecting people differently than sitting in church here and nothing to put down mm -hmm. church, nothing to put down the Bible, nothing to put down pastors. But for some people, they're just connecting with the stories more than why well, I, I tell people, and I, I, I don't want to um, downplay it, um, but, you know, we've got people leaving the earth every day. So our stories are new every day because someone that's losing someone wants to hear where their loved one went. Mm -hmm. And so as long as we got human beings on the planet, the story will be new because uh, that person really didn't probably pay attention to that story until something happened to the family member. I had someone come up to me in church this last uh, Sunday and they said to me, you know, your story helped me out. And she just started telling me all the people that she's lost in the last two years since 2020 and that the story helped her to go through that, to grieve those family members that have left the planet, her mom, her brother, you know, uh, someone else, an uncle that left, all those people that in the last, since 2020, um, she was a, so those are things that, you know, we, we, I, I never really thought I would be impacting people like this. There's no way. I had no idea that the impact would be like it is. And then there's those that are leaving the planet. I have a 16-year-old girl that I Zoomed about a, a week ago, and she's getting ready to leave the planet. She's fought cancer since she was a little girl. I've known her since then, prayed for her. But she's come to realize that her battle is almost over with. And her name is Olivia. And Olivia wanted to ask me a bunch of questions about heaven and, and things there. And so I answered. Still prayed for her to be healed. Don't get me wrong. I still want her to stay on the blood, but she wanted to know. And so I did. You know, she's 16 years old now. So so those are the things that, you know, you, I never, ever, if you asked me, you know, when I first started that I would be doing this and reaching this, I mean, there's no way I would ever think about it. You know, we try to be as pure as we can with everybody and as we go, because I think that's important. And, I, you know, I'm not trying to be, be religious, quote unquote, but pure. This is who I am. This is who you are. That's who we are, period. And I try to be that way with everybody I come in contact with. You know, so can't walk on water. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of the churches that say these near-death experiences were false prophets? This is the devil and that kind of stuff. I They can say whatever they want. You know, it doesn't stop me from sharing the truth. You know, when Jesus came, the, the Pharisees and Sadducees thought he was a false prophet. Remember that? He thought he was Beelzebub. You know, all kinds of things. So I, if I, I'm in good company. <laughs> we, we still have those uh, Pharisees and Sadducees out there that believe they, they are in the right and everybody else is in the wrong. And God still loves them. You understand what I mean? Uh, I remember when I was in heaven and Jesus was sharing with me and he was telling me there's two types of spirit in every church. There's the one of Laodicea, uh, which is in Revelation. And then there's the one of Philadelphia, which is the pure one. And he says, every church has both type of spirits. And then he said to me, which um, uh, door was I knocking on? He said he was knocking on the one that was all messed up, which was the Laodiceans. And he let me know he's going after them still, too. So even the churches that come after me, because like you're right, most of the time I don't have people that attack me that don't know Christ. It's the ones that are supposed to know Christ that do the attacking. 
I call them. They, they're the ones that throw the rocks over the fence. <laughs> I'm on one side of the fence, and they throw the rocks over. They hit me. You know. Are but you the reality, speaking at churches? I'm sorry, I interrupt well, you. I speak at churches. You know, I I speak at churches. Um, I speak at uh, community meetings. I speak at. Uh, I've I've done the Lions Club, the Rotary Club. I've I've done a number of different um, venues. Uh, I've been on the, I remember being in, in Pismo Beach, uh, California, and being on the pier and speaking on the pier, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> done parks, lots and lots of parks. I did it. I was up in Minnesota in a town uh, doing an open uh, service in a park. I mean, so uh, I've yeah. been a lot of different, and, and don't think those are my favorites or my venues or things, but that's where God puts me and that's where we're going. And so have you been involved uh, with IONS, International Association Near Death Studies? Have those people? No, I haven't. Not, okay. I'm no. not surprised because they really I have learned to seem like they kind of want to keep Christians out. And so and you're mm -hmm. asking like for people to be saved and stuff. And I'm thinking, well, they're really missing out by not having you. But um I don't associate with them anymore because I was realizing they are trying to turn people away from church and away uh -huh. from Christianity using NDEs to do it. I'm like, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Again, I had these big rose colored glasses. Oh, NDE, you know, research. And I thought it was all about God and, and Jesus in heaven. And I'm like, and they're like, what? You're pro-life. You got a decision to make being pro-life or IONS leadership. Cause I had started groups and online groups and everything. Right. So of course, no brainer. Right. I left the organization, but they continued to harass me. Um, and invite me wherever I was invited to speak um, mm -hmm. because they think that being Christian and being pro-life is evil. Right. I'm judgmental. Being Christian is judgmental. And, you right. know, and so I, I can kind of understand why some of the churches believe that NDEs are like over the devil and stuff, because part of it is part of it yeah. is against God and against Christianity. And so us in the ears that are Christian and are mm -hmm. praising God, you know, we have to go elsewhere. And that's why well, I ended up making this podcast. One of the things I think also, um, remember Jesus said, these signs will follow them that believe. And so when I go different places and I get to share, I see people get healed, physically healed, you know, from a lot of different situations. Some of those people have been prayed for. Some of them, they're just sitting in the, in the audience and they get healed. You know, I've seen people be delivered from a lot of different things in their in their life, you know. And then I also ask people to accept Jesus. So I, I get the experience when people accept Jesus and to see the change on their face or the 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 atmosphere change around them. I I, I remember this lady in 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 uh, upstate New York and no not upstate New York in Bellingham. New York, uh, uh, Bellingham, Vermont. I was ministering in a church, and she accepted Jesus. And the brightness that came after off of her face, I I can't describe in words. You know, I yes. saw the little change of the whole structure of her face from worry and stress to this great joy before my eyes. And so I think with us, we bring that too. We just don't bring the story, but we bring the power of God and the power of God moves on people. So I don't know about this other group, if they have their stuff, but I know that when people come and hear me or hear the story or even some of my friends out there, all of a sudden, the movement of God, the power of God has moved on them and their lives are changed. What they are hoping to achieve is like, they are like God. Like they take, mm -hmm. they, they say, take ketamine to have a near death experience. Like there's not no God in that drug. You're not going to have no. it. And they claim, oh, yes, it's you know, proven. And like, no, it's not like stop. But nobody does this to me. But yeah, I only get to see what you're talking about in some comments and not nearly you know, to what you're talking about. But just, you know, well, I, I, believe I didn't believe until I heard these. Well, I'm, I'm going to pray that you start seeing that more. Your story is, is real. It's it's a lie. And it's going to bring life to people. And so I, I you know, you know, I, I'm, I'm desiring that you start seeing that more, that these signs do follow you because those signs are, are confirmation, not only with your words, but they're confirmation that God's in this. 
And you're gonna, I just believe you're gonna start seeing that. You're gonna start seeing people's lies. You can pray, you're gonna start seeing things like that. Um, I I just feel that. I've never done that again. You can go look at all the YouTubes. I ain't never done this. With I appreciate anybody. it. <laughs> I appreciate it. Because I do sometimes. I mean, I, I might do like 25 in a month and then I may do five the next month because something will happen. I just like, I don't know if I want to do this. Like a guy almost come on my show and luckily I caught it before he did. He was going to come on and I started researching him and uh he, it lies everywhere, claiming he was the head of this psychiatry and all this, and telling people that to go off your medication, just l- call me and pay this money, five, 20 minutes, I'll hear your depression and PTSD. I'm like, oh my gosh, he's been doing this for 20 years. And he was almost on my show. Like, you know, thinking of the damage I could cause by having, yeah. and people say, well, only have Christians on your show. Well, I don't want to screen people, you yeah. know? And I thought, well, I think I'm going to have to somewhat screen people when I think they could do actually to harm people. Cause I, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know who's yeah. telling me the truth. I mean, I can feel it in my heart. You know, I can feel you in my heart and other ones. Like I tell them, I can feel in my heart that you, you know, you were there. And that's when I get excited. Mm-hmm. If yeah. I, if I'm not feeling it, I'm just kind of like drawing and, you know, I mean, I take notes, but I don't look down anymore. You just have to look down. <laughs> Cause I throw them away when I'm done. It helps me focus and keep what you're saying. Yeah. So I don't like right. daydream and go off. It helps me stay with them. But, um, but so, well, yeah. I'm a, really I, a I commit pleasure. this to do for you. And that is, I, I will put you on my prayer list and I will start praying for you on a regular basis. And so I'm one of as many people, I can't reach everybody. And so as many people as we can get out there to reach as many people as possible, there's people that you're going to touch that I'm never going to touch. So if we can get that going, that's all that matters to me. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, uh, I thought I would, I'd be, uh, I thought I was, I, I did that um, after death video uh, movie and I, and I was yeah. there for three hours being shot and I was just given the re, the uh, notice just recently that um, I was cut down to two sentences <laughs> out of the whole, out of the whole movie. And I'm okay with that. You know what I mean? Cause as long as, it portrays and gets out there that people need Jesus. I'm okay with it. I don't know the fullness of it or what it's going to do. Oh, I, hope um, but it I, changes. Do I will pray that that changes because <laughs> I was, because I know it's not going to be out yet for like a couple months, like October, I think it's coming out. That, mm-hmm. um, because I was uh, supposed to be on Dr. Oz and they were flying me out there to New York. I'm in Ohio. I was so excited. And then they call and say, well, I think we're just going to zoom you for like two minutes. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Thank you. And I'm thinking, wow, right. I want to share my story, but I didn't, you know, throw a fuss. Cause you know, they don't have to do nothing for me. I'm just privileged to be able to do it. Cause I don't have a best selling book. I'm not a good speaker. You know, I, it was just like God's intervention. I even got to go I'm like, okay. And, but I just started praying after that. I was like, God, I really wanted to go. I really want to share my story. About an hour later, they called back. We changed our mind. We're flying you out and they end up having Dr. Jeffrey Long on Zoom for a couple of minutes after I spoke. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, he's on all the time, so it didn't hurt him any, you know. But so I was like over the moon, just like, thank you. And then when I got there and I'm in the dressing room and I'm going through this Cinderella moment, you know, because I it's my five minutes of fame. And I'm like, and it wasn't about me. It was about getting to tell everybody that God sent me back. I got to raise my yeah. kids. And, and so that's why I wasn't nervous about being TV. People yeah. like, aren't you nervous? Like, no, because this was about God. It wasn't about me. And that's yeah. how I get when I share my story. You prior to, And um, so I'm sitting in the dressing room and I'm all excited to go and share my story. And then they come in and they, at the very last minute and the producer's like, okay. Um, well, before the last minute, they come in and they say, okay, um, we don't want you to talk about this. We want you to talk about this. And if you want to cry, it's okay. And I'm like, I don't cry, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then like, I, I'm like, so they left and I told my husband, I said, I can't do that. I don't know how to tell my story to leave out this and leave out that. And I'm like, I can't do it. And so I just started praying. And I tell you what, 10 minutes later, they walked back in. This was the very last minute before I went on. And they said, you know what? We've been watching some of your YouTubes and you just talk out ever you want talk as long as you want <laughs> do whatever you want i'm like yes god thank you jesus <laughs> thank you well that's so, good to know yeah it was it was and everybody was like oh my gosh you like you looked fat and are you happy with the way you looked i'm like 
Are you totally missing the point? None of that matters. Yeah. Is there to look any certain way? Was there because God let me come back and raise my sons? Yeah. I was told the answer was no, it was my time. And I come back mm-hmm. and I was like, I'll forever be grateful. And, you know, I'll never yeah. say praise God yeah. that this yeah. wasn't true. Like, they'll have to burn me at the stake like Joan of Arc, you know, because I'll never <laughs> say it ain't true because it is. Yeah. And and let and you know I first start coming out I was really scared like apparently you yes, weren't like yeah. kudos to you I would love it if I would have had that courage and just went out there and just started talking I wish I would have done that but I was afraid yeah I really was I didn't want to look like a liar crazy all those things a fool you know for me it wasn't so much um, I like I said I just was sharing with people first and then um, the first church I went to. Uh, was my friend's church and he asked me to come and share and then I shared and then someone else asked me to share really in a restaurant and with people eating and I did that was my second adventure and so and so it just kept on growing from then you know um, people just kept on asking and kept on but again I didn't think I was doing it I thought I was going to be just for a moment in my life and then I would go back to doing what I did because I loved what I was doing and I really enjoyed it. And so, um, but the Lord said, nope, that's not what it was all about. So now I you have like it. a team of people scheduling you and getting you there yeah. and, and the team to pray with people. And that's awesome. I would love yeah. to see it. You ever come down around Ohio? You got anything on your schedule? Uh, we're at Ohio. I'm Southeast Ohio, Marietta, Columbus area. Oh, it's Columbus area. Yeah, I've been I've been to well, I've been through Columbus a whole lot. I have never spoken in that area. I think Cincinnati and uh, Cleveland. I've spoken in Cincinnati and Cleveland. Okay. You know, in Cincinnati, I did a um, a um, that they have their children's hospital there in Cincinnati, and uh, we didn't get to speak in the hospital, but we rented uh, a place in the zoo there, Cincinnati Zoo. And we invited all the um, parents that were going through kids that were going through cancer. And we had about 45 of them show up and their kids. And then we told the story of what I experienced. And then also we got to cater it for them. And also they um, didn't got to do the zoo. We bought zoo tickets for them and their families to enjoy the zoo. So that's the closest I've come to your area. Um, besides, oh, I've been in Dayton, Ohio area too. Okay. In Akron and area. So I've been in those areas and spoke, but this, I haven't been to Cl- that Ohio and spoken Ohio for maybe about four years now. So is, uh, your schedule on, do you have a schedule that you post on your website? Yeah, it's on okay. the website. Yeah. It's on the I'll website. And, and so you can look at it. Um, but I'll tell you right now, 2024 is almost out. I'm looking at, uh, 2025 and so it's just i mean like i can look on the schedule like see where you're going to be at like if i can come watch your you speak okay like right like people can get yeah, on there yeah, if they want yeah, to come see yeah you yeah, can see where i'm going to be yeah so yeah that's what i mean so, yeah i yeah, don't have money to <laughs> or venue or any, i don't do any of that to like i just do my zoom do you, do you know randy k or not yeah you, you do know randy Okay. It sounds like you didn't have a good experience with him. You're correct. Okay. All right. So then I won't go any deeper than that. Okay. I won't either. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I don't have a poker face. So. Yeah, all right. But yes, I know him well. So, well, um, no. huh? The only reason I said that, because I know he's having a venue next year where he's having a, a number of people come and speak. And so I just was going to say that to you, but that's okay. Yeah. So. Thank you. <laughs> well, do you know John Burks? Then? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You get along with him though? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He's a good friend of mine too. So that's, that's John. John is, I talked to him just the other day. He's in that um, after death movie, you know, but he has a different reason he's doing this. than so, I, I would just say this, and that's all there is to it, is um, when I first started my channel, um, 
Randy K uh, was to be a guest, but then he canceled. That's just fine, not a big deal. But then somebody let me know he was starting or uh, doing a uh, conference or a, like an online conference. I'm like, oh, yes, yeah, finally, yeah. Christians going to do NDE conference. Yay, because everything I dealt with ions. I was so yeah, excited. Yeah. So I looked it up online. It said NDE TV, like presents or hosts or something like that. His conference. I'm into ETV. Oh, really? I didn't know anything about it. So I'm like, please take this down. Please uh-huh. do not use my name. Right, and it was right. a big legal mess. Oh. And I had COVID. I'm sick with COVID. Yeah. And fighting, asking, please take down into ETV off yeah. your flyers, your announcements and stuff. Yeah. I have nothing to, I'm, I'm kudos to you. Great. You're doing this, but yeah. I'm not hosting it. You're right. 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 I don't want my name on your ads, you know, cause people are buying tickets and I don't want people to buy tickets. And if somebody skips the country, they're going to come right. after NDTV. Right. 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 So that was it. And they wouldn't take it down. They wouldn't take it down. And I was sick with COVID and I had to fight and fight and wow. fight. And I finally got it taken down. Well, they business people. I can tell you that right they now. They are business people. Well, I think it said <laughs> at that time, I looked him up, he had like five Fortune 500 companies. And I'm just a little nonprofit that just started up yeah. Long Island, Ohio, you know, and I'm fighting this guy to not use my name. And they just didn't yeah. care. They didn't care. So, I kind of think you're probably with him fighting Randy. That sounds like more Renee, his wife. So. No, I was fighting Randy. Yeah. Yeah, I was fighting Randy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we had we had words between us on email. It wasn't good, you know, because oh, I just Come wanted on. my name off. That's all I wanted. Please don't use my name. That guy, why would he do that? We don't do that. If we really ex- ex- experience Jesus, we don't do that. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. If, if we, I always say this. If you really had that encounter with Jesus, then you don't do that. Because I had an encounter with Jesus. I couldn't get away with nothing. I can't get away with a bad thought in my head without him telling me something. You know, especially treating people. You know, this is not eternal. All this stuff is going to fade away any way. So, okay. Yeah. I just felt bullied by this big businessman. You know, and yeah. I just, I didn't know anything about Zoom when I started. I didn't know anything about YouTube. I was just yeah, yeah. little tiny me, you know, down here in this country. And this huge company, you know, is used to running all these, because, you know, multi-million companies, I don't know, all this money companies. Just, it's my name. You can't have it. Just because you want yeah. it. It's a really cool name. Doesn't mean you can just take it. And he knew it was yeah. my name because he had, was going to be a guest prior to this. So he knew it was my name. Yeah. And he just wanted well, the sad it. thing about it. Yeah. Just, just, just to, well, I'll pray, pray for both of you, to be honest with you, but I'll pray because that's, that should not be, you're yeah, right. I'm over it. It's just like when, have you heard of Randy Kay? Like, I don't have a poker face. <laughs> <laughs> so that's well, it. That's sad. all there was to it. It's sad. You know, that's sad to, to hear. You know, we got too many people to be um, sharing the stories with so that they can come to know Jesus. And so, yeah, because, you know, when Ions, like I said, Ions, I thought it was Christian stuff. I found out it wasn't. And then when I heard he had this NDE you know, for Christians. Yay, because Ions was keeping Christians out of everything. They were telling people yeah. they couldn't say God and Jesus in their talks when they speak at Ions groups and conferences and stuff. And so when he Randy K started this Christian thing, cool. Yeah. But then he wanted my name. So I'm like, okay, I'm never putting rose colored glasses on again <laughs> and thinking <laughs> something so great because I'm I'm like that. I go in thinking people are just wonderful and then I get disappointed. So <laughs> well, they, the people are wonderful, you know. There are so. some wonderful people, and it's been very yeah. nice meeting you, and you have really Perfect. energized me to continue doing this because I tell you, some days I feel like throwing in the towel. <laughs> So I can send people your way that I know that some of them, um, you know, they're out there and some of them are not, but they have good stories. So I can send people because I got a number of people that I would say that had the experience, but they haven't really shared it. You know what I mean? And it would be great if they they could share it and share their story. Yeah, NDETV at Yahoo.com. 
and it helps people to be healed. You know that. You know there's a there's a yeah. process of being back on the planet, and I run into a lot of people. So I will start probably um, sending people your way that I run into, if that's Thank okay you. with you. Thank you. That you was know? another thing when I had this tiff with Randy. Um, I would invite people who've been on his show, like I do other shows. We sue each other's guests, right. right? And they would agree, and then they would not. Then they would back out, and then I'm like, what's going on? And then someone told me that they're telling people I make Christians look bad. Oh, okay. That's what he was yeah. doing. He was telling people, don't go on her show because she makes Christians look bad. Wow. Okay. And at well, the same I time, per- I had Ian's calling my guests after they were on my show, telling them, if you would just stop saying Jesus and God and stop this Christian silliness, we'd have you, uh, you know, on our conference. We, yeah. Wow. Like, Christians don't fall for that. Yeah. If you're a Christian. If you want fame and yeah. fortune, book sales, go ahead, try it. Good luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Christians, You're like, right. you know, like they gave me the ultimatum pro life, Christian, or I, and it's like, I'm out of here. Yeah. I started my own thing. So well, we'll these are times of trial, we'll, aren't they? Yeah. What we'll do is we'll send people in your direction that I know, because I run into them all over the place. And so um, there'll be some of them will be raw. Yeah, I mean, it's they fine. really have that. never shared. They never shared their story really with a lot of people. And some of them will be people that, yeah, they have shared their story off and on. Because you know how you run into people all the time. I do because I travel a lot and people come up to me and said, no one. I get to share with someone the story now that I haven't been able to share with people. I remember that one of the first times with this Italian guy, uh, I was I was I was doing a meeting with these Catholics and he came to the um, to hear me talk. And he came up to me, he said, we know, we know. <laughs> That's what he said to me, older man. And then his daughter come up to me and she's crying. He says, I didn't know this about my dad. He had died at 12 years old and he's never shared the story. And he wrote it all out. And here, I, 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 it was in Italian first, so she had to write it in English and she gave it to me. But the reality of it is that, uh, that I, from that moment on, I've run into people all over the world that have had this experience. And a lot of them, like you, they were afraid to share it because people would say they're crazy or they were told they were crazy. He was told by his family, don't you ever say anything to anybody. But when he when he came up to me, he said, we know. I'll never forget that. We know. We know. That's what he said. to me. <laughs> You know, so I've run into those people all over the United States. So I will use you as a, a venue for people to be able to share their stories. And I will tell them thank that you. I thank God for this. This Thank is good. This is really good. When I was with Ian's, I was getting ready to start a podcast and I would call it NB, NDE newbies because I wanted yeah. people just like that. People that hadn't shared their story before, because in Ian's at that time, it was like only the popular ones got to be told over and over yeah, yeah. and they wasn't giving new people a shot at it. And I wanted to hear those stories. And actually, I think the people that are making movies are doing a mm-hmm. disservice by I'm not the one you're in, but another one I know. And I told him that I was like, I think you're doing a disservice by having the same popular few over and over because people are getting tired of that story. They've heard it for years. They want to hear that new story. Well, the after, after death has the same popular people. Uh, Like I said, I'm very short compared to a lot of the other people that are in it. They've been, they've been so, but that's okay. I, I was told by the Holy spirit, you promote it. You get it out there and I'll do that. It's not going to impact me. I still get to share. You know what I mean? I still get to go to heaven. Um, it's not going to stop me from doing the things I'm doing. And so I, I'm going to do what God tells me to do in, in that case. But I am going to start um, telling people to get on. I'm going to share your story with people, but I'm also going to share that your plan because I want more people to be able to to. Uh, do what he called share. And I also am praying that you get the money to do the movies. You know what I mean? I tell you what's going to happen. Know. They're going to get that two minutes of you. And that's going to be a teaser because they've heard these other people so many times. They haven't heard people mm-hmm. that haven't heard of you. You're going to get contacted for, to you know, feature you because people are going to be, he's going to get that two minutes to spark that interest. Okay. <laughs> we'll see what Jesus because, does. Because I love your story. 
And, you know, when you mentioned a person was going to have a hell story on with yours, I can see where you guys decided not to do that because those things bring people down and yeah, we're like yeah. bringing everybody up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's well, it just like, you really see the dark and the light on earth. It really brought him down, you know? And the reason I was told that I had been cut back, to be honest with you, is because of the hell stories. They got into the hell side of it and they wanted to put more of that in it. So they cut what they had on my side out. That's what they texted me and told me. And I said, okay, Jesus knows, you know what I mean? So, but you know, that's what they want to do and they'll go ahead and do it. I'm, I'm, I'm on a different path. Yeah. <laughs> so that's I the get thing, to do right? what I get. Don't look yeah. left, don't look right, look straight ahead. God told yeah, me that one so. day on something. I heard it and I followed and led me to my husband, my soulmate. Yeah. I was walking you know, in somewhere I'm a, and I saw don't look left, don't look right, look straight ahead, that he would be there and he was. Yeah. I hate to cut it short, but oh, I have we to. We got to go. Be, okay, be, thank you. Go. <laughs> thank two you. Hours. But, I, but I got your information. Um, um, can, you, can you take a, this down, okay? Okay. Um, my phone number is 253. Okay, hold on, hold on. Um, I don't edit my videos, so if you want to say goodbye and then give oh. me the number so I can cut it off. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, bye. So, so thank you funny. for coming. Thank you. <laughs> and I'll put the links for your books and your website in the description. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. So, goodbye. And now you tell me.